you've just set up your Unifor network, or you've had it running for a little while, there are 10 things you need to know that you make sure you've got set up to make sure your network is secure, fast, and future-proofed. So let's jump straight into number one. It may seem obvious, but you may want to keep your console and devices up to date. The reason for this, security patches, performance tweaks, new features. Also, enabling automatic updates allows you to schedule them during maintenance windows to avoid downtime. So if we go into control plane, updates you can see we have all the updates listed along here we have the unify os console and then the individual applications for example within the individual network application you can click on it and then go to device updates that takes you to another section where you can actually make sure your devices are getting updated and getting the right firmware updates you need now you can leave this tick box right here for leaving device auto update or you can then turn that off if it's something you wish to do manually. And just further underneath, as I mentioned, if you do have a maintenance window, you can add a new schedule and then you can say when you want this to repeat. So it could be monthly at 12.30 and it could be on the 5th of every month, for example. So you can set up schedules to make sure you're within that maintenance window. Setting up VLANs for network segmentation. Now this again could be something you've just set up and you wanna set up your individual networks or you could be running this for a little while and you now want to start splitting out your networks. You simply go to settings, networks and it gives you a full list of networks that are already created there. Chances are if this is brand new, you're only gonna have one network within there and you can literally go down here and just click new virtual network. You give it a name. You can say where the router is. Are you routing it through a third party gateway? Are you using a switch or are you using the UDM Pro? You can then set a zone, which we'll come back to shortly. We'll cover that in a little bit more detail. But chances are, if you're setting up something internally, you're going to be using internal. If you're using guest or IoT, chances are you might be using hotspots. And if it's something that needs accessing from the internet, you may have it in the DMZ. So let's go with the internal for now. We can give it an IP address, gateway subway, a gateway and subnet. I personally recommend turning off auto scaling the network because you don't know if something gets compromised on your network and it's just asking for DHCP addresses, it will just balloon your network straight away. And then you would give it a VLAN ID. Now each of your virtual networks separately has a different VLAN ID. So give it whatever your number you want. You can choose anything between one to 4,096. There's a few other settings in here for isolating the network, internet access, IGMP snooping, multicast DNS, DHCP, ping conflict detection, default gateway, DNS server, ping conflict. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here, but if you wanna see a deeper dive into setting up VLANs, let me know and I'll do a separate video on that for you. This moves us nicely on to number three, and that is setting up your Wi-Fi network for your VLANs. So if we go to Wi-Fi, I have a couple of networks here already. We can go and create new, and then we can choose the network that we're gonna be testing. So I created YouTube video test. We can go and use that, give it a name, test Wi-Fi, and then give it a password. And that will be then set up for you. You can choose specific APs or group of APs. In this instance, I'm just gonna set it up on all of them. And then there's a whole bunch of settings that you can have set up on here for private pre-shared keys. I have another video coming on this soon. Whether you're setting up as a hotspot, IoT connectivity, what bands you're going to be using, MLO if that's something that you're interested in and we'll scroll a little bit further down and then we have our security protocols down here so WPA2, WPA3 or if you want to just use WPA3 you can use that too. And you're probably wondering why some of these are greyed out and you can see WPA has been disabled because the 6 gigahertz band is selected and we don't have the option to select 2.4 and 5 because we've reached our limits on this. This is where the private pre-shared keys might come into use but again, another one for another video. The next one is fine tuning your Wi-Fi devices. Now I have a full video on this, which I'll leave down in the description, which is 10 tips to optimize your Wi-Fi networks. But I'll quickly briefly touch on it right here. You would go to Unify devices, select your access point, and then go to settings. Within here, you can tweak channel width, channel, transmit power for all three radios, 2.4, 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz and also you have the option to disable it if it's something that you're not using on that wi-fi access point you have some settings around here around meshing so if you want to be able to mesh your access points you have the parent and connect and then you have the uplink priority as well once you've seen what's in use around your areas you generally want to set a specific channel and then set your transmit power and then you might want to give it a channel width as well 2.4 you probably want to stick with 20 megahertz channel 5 gigahertz, you probably want to go to 80 or possibly 160, depending on how clear your area is. And then the 6 gigahertz, you can go to 160 or even 320. Again, this is all explained in that video if you want to go and check that out. 
And then we move on to some of the security side of things. So we would be enabling IDS and IPS, and we simply do that by going to settings, we go to cyber secure, and then we have this protection tab just here. There's a few different things you can do in here. Again, we can deeper dive into anything. If there's something specific you want to see, drop me a comment, but it would literally just be down here. Intrusion prevention, we want to turn that on, which networks we want it set up on. We want to notify and block, and then you want to tick anything that's relevant on here. One thing to keep in mind is the more active detections you have, it could slow down your throughput on your networks. So do check your maximum throughput for IPS and IDS detections. I'm running the UDM Pro Max, so I know I have a five gigabit maximum in terms of IPS and IDS throughput. The reason also for setting this up would be just to help detect and block any malicious traffic. Next one is blocking any specific region. So just moving a little bit up, you can see region blocking, you can tick this and then you can allow or deny and then select your country or territories. There's probably a list of countries that you may not want to be talking to or from. You can go and populate that in here and you can select multiple if you wish to do so. Next, number seven is content filtering. So it depends who you have on your network. You may wish to set up some content filtering. So within the cyber secure area, you go to content filtering at the top and you can create new. You can give it a name. I've called mine YouTube test. We can select a source so we can choose a specific network or even a device. So if you want to lock it down to a specific device, you can do that as well. You can choose ad block if that's something you want to turn on. Safe search for Google, Bing and YouTube. And then we have filtering. We can either have off or basic. Basic is adult and malicious filtering. And then we can add specific domains in here if that's what we wish to do as well. And if you have a full list of them, you can add multiple and you can put them all in here, separating them via semicolons or you can import a file too. Finally, you have your schedule. If you want it always daily, weekly, one time or custom, you can set that to with your content filtering. So, and you can set up as many of these that you might need. So if you have your staff network, you might want something, or if you have a guest network, you might want something. So you can break that down, even your IoT devices, for example, you can break that down in terms of every single network or device. Now, number eight is the firewall zones and rules. Now, I'm probably going to get a bit of heat for this one in the comments, but I'm not actually going to go too much into this because this is actually a video in itself. So you would go to policy engine and firewall and everything down here, you'd want to set up your firewall accordingly and start blocking traffic between your networks, for example, IoT or your guests. Again, there's a lot to cover in here for this video. So I'm going to be creating a separate video on here. And if you want to see something specific about this, again, you know what you need to do. Drop me a comment and I will try and cover that in my future video. But the long story short is you want to block your traffic sort of almost between everything and just allow exactly what you need. Number nine is two parts to it. So there's backup and also logging. So we can go to control plane at the bottom, go to backups, and then you want to make sure your backups are done. Automatically, this is ticked to weekly. So just make sure they are backed up weekly and you can use that there. Should you wish to download or restore, you can do that also as well. And that will download everything you need. When it comes to restoring, this is something new that I've just seen recently. You also have the option to restore individual applications if that's what you wish to do. There's another section for backup as well, and that's also in system. And this would be just for unified networks. So we go to general backups, restore, download or reschedule. When you click on reschedule, if you want to change it to weekly, daily, monthly, however you want, and then you can choose on what date, the maximum number of files and what you want to back up. So do you want just the settings only? Do you want seven days worth of retention? 30 days, 60, 90, and yeah, the, the list goes on. And for logging, we go to cyber secure and then traffic logging, and then we have everything all in here. So flow logging, do you want to have all traffic or just block traffic? We have additional flows like gateway DNS or unified device management, if that's what you want and where you want to store those logs. You can have it turned off if you want, you can have it internally stored. You do need to make sure you have a hard drive installed though, because there is an accumulation of the, some of the syslogs, or if you have a seam server, you can go and use something like that. So Splunk, Microsoft Sentinel or even IBM Q Radar. If you wish to have more verbose logging, then you can turn this on and that will have the debug logs in there as well. But obviously, again, that will contain a lot more details and more sensitive information within. So use that one cautiously. For data retention, you can choose how long you want it for and you can change that. We leave it for auto for now. And it's the same with the logging levels too. You can have verbose debug normal across all these four different areas. So we have 
system, remote access, management, and device. And finally, the last tip that you might wanna use for setting up your network is getting a VPN set up. So a lot of people in instances have systems on their network that they need to access externally. Rather than exposing that specific system to the internet, you could use something like a VPN. You can use the Wi-Fi Man app and just connect automatically. And that is just the links being generated here. Or you can set up a specific VPN server. I would probably steer you away from the L2TP VPN, but you can choose OpenVPN or WireGuard. Again, if you want further deeper dive tutorials, you know what you need to do. So we give the server a name. You can give it a private and public key. We can choose which IP address we're going to be coming in on. And there's a whole list down here, depending if you have a single IP or multiple IPs, or if you're behind a dynamically assigned IP, you can use this and just set that up for the VPN. You can add clients. So if you want to use a client, you can download a config file or you can choose manual if you want all the information and you can have multiple clients set up on this as well. It doesn't need to be single. Then you can leave this as auto again, or you can set this to manual and then set all the IP settings. Again, this can be managed through the zone based firewall. Another video that I will go through in further detail that'll be in the firewall video. And as soon as I get those videos out, I'll publish them down below. So if you do see them there, that means they've already been created. Now, I know there are a lot more tips that we can get set up, and that's probably something I might cover in another video. But if there is something I did miss, drop it down in the comment and help the other viewers get something set up more securely. Or if I've missed something obvious, again, let me know down in the comments below. The firewall video is probably coming very shortly. So do keep your eyes peeled for that one. For now, this is Inside Wire. And I'll see you in the next one.